Hello everyone, I'm Chris Fernandez and this is the Weekly Report. This week we focus on news that will help kickstart your summer in the city of Kansas City, Missouri. School may be out, but there are plenty of summer kids activities sponsored by the city. Registration for Mayor's Night is now open through June 10th. Kids age 11 to 18 can participate in Club KC featuring DJs, swim parties, video games and more. The Night Hoops, Nets, and Kicks leagues offer organized basketball, volleyball, and soccer games. The Police Athletic League Summer Program starts June 6th and offers athletic programs and field trips. To register, complete the application form at the Powell office at 1801 White Avenue between 1 and 6 p.m. The Parks and Recreation Department also sponsors day camps for kids during the summer at community centers across the city. Camp activities include swimming, field trips, and more. Just visit kcparks.org for more information. And don't forget, the summer curfew starts in Kansas City on May 27th and runs through September 25th. For minors, 15 and younger, the curfew is 10 p.m. For 16 and 17 year olds, the curfew is 11 p.m. in most parts of the city. Keep in mind that the city's five entertainment districts, the Plaza, Westport, Downtown Central Business District, 18th and Vine, and Zona Rosa, have a special summer curfew that requires anyone under 18 to be accompanied by a parent or guardian after 9 p.m. For parents, we have a downloadable curfew guide. It's available for you to print and then post on the fridge at kcmo.gov. Just search curfew. Now let's check in with news from other city departments. This is the first proclamation for Comic-Con because it's Stan Lee. Stan Lee is really the godfather of comic books. Anybody that I know who's ever liked comics started reading Marvel comics years and years and decades ago. I certainly did. This man's a hero, co-creator of some of the best superheroes known to man. Thor, Spider-Man, the Hulk, Amazing, or uh, X-Men, all of those things. And he's in town. He's 93 years old. I'm not sure we'll have a chance to do this again. He's probably going to stop traveling soon. But since he's here and the first time he's been here, it's perfect, and he loves our city, and we love him. Okay, hi, so it is my honor to introduce Mayor Sly James. <laughs> Welcome. Good afternoon. You know what, today is a pretty special day in Kansas City and for Planet Comic Con. We're excited and honored to welcome such a distinguished guest to our town. Every day in this city and in this world, we come across superheroes working to make a difference in our lives. Mothers, fathers, grandparents, firemen, policemen, people in the military, all of those people are heroes in their own way. At the same time, and for many of us, including most of us in this room, we remain enamored with superheroes of a different kind. Those with special powers and a penchant to save us from the rigors of ordinary life. Now the man I'm about to introduce has spent over 60 years creating and bringing to life those superheroes. It's only fitting that today, May 21st, 2016, we present Mr. Stan Lee with a proclamation on behalf of the city of Kansas City, Missouri for his achievements and dedication to the literary arts. congratulate you on having one of the best mayors I've ever met in any city anywhere in this country. Where is he? <laughs> you, Sly, you're the greatest. Thank you very much. Okay. The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department supports a number of charities but its relationship with Special Olympics has been a partnership that's lasted 30 years. A 5K torch run was held recently at East Patrol around the Leon Mercer Jordan campus. Captain Karen True of the Violent Crimes Enforcement Division and Captain Cindy Cotterman of the Central Patrol Division explained why KCPD gets involved. Thirty years ago in Wichita, Kansas, a uh, chief down there had the idea to um, 
bringing law enforcement in to help Special Olympics. So this is our 30th anniversary and law enforcement agencies all across the United States and really across the world uh, raise money and participate in lots of different events to help Special Olympics. And it's really great. Here in Kansas City, some of the things that we do are the Polar Plunge, the Broadway Bridge Run, Tip a Cop, we've had bowling, we sell raffle tickets. So we really raise money all year round and we just have a great time. And then besides that, we also help out at games. Do you want to talk about games? Um, we um, participate where the uh, athletes are in their games and we give out the medals. We have different officers that will give out the medals uh, to the uh, athletes that are in the games. Uh, today is really the kickoff for the torch run for this year and long, this, today's event just not, did not include just Kansas City but we had runners from all over the region just come out and support us and help and, and rerun re because we love our athletes and we love Special Olympics and um, running today we just are kicking off our torch run club year and we're just going to have a great year and raise lots of money for Special Olympics. The 5K runners began in front of East Patrol and ran north on Prospect to 22nd Street and over to Brooklyn and then across 26th Street back to the station. Sergeant Bud Schott, who recently retired from KCPD's Central Patrol after 35 years, is quite possibly the longest running participant. I've always did it. So I've always, when there's a chance to sign up, I always did it. So. How many years have you run it now? Uh, it's been 20 something altogether. The main reason I run it is because it's for a good cause, it's Special Olympics. And I do it for the exercise. And Bud has not only helped out, just he's helped out too at the station when he was at East, when he was assigned to Center Patrol Division. He helped out so much. He sold tickets and show, sold shirts for us, and he was always there, always go to person at Center Patrol. Special Olympics Development Manager Rachel Spiza says KCPD activities are important to the organization. Um, honestly, I don't think that Kansas City would be as successful um, as we are without the support of KCPD. They, like Karen and Cindy said, help uh, tremendously with KC, <laughs> with the plunge, um, and they host the annual Broadway Bridge Run, which are the two largest events here um, in the Kansas City Metro and um, with their help and support in 2015 we raised nearly $200,000 for the athletes here in the Kansas City Metro so like I said we we wouldn't be able to, to um, give our athletes the opportunities that we are able to give them without their support. The 5K Torch Run is just the beginning of a year filled with more events for Special Olympics. Each year, the Missouri Automobile Dealers Association donates a vehicle to Special Olympics, um, and we sell raffle tickets for a few months, and so that's getting uh, kicked off. We're starting that, and then we are gearing up for the 2016 Broadway Bridge Run, which is Sunday, September um, 26th at the Kauffman Center for Performing Arts. If you'd like to learn more about how to support the local chapter of Special Olympics, visit their website at somo.org slash KCMetro. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Up and down the street. Every day, this truck and 10 others like it roll along Kansas City streets, sweeping up what's been left behind. A lot of debris, a lot of leaves. This is the KC Water Street Sweeper Fleet. Their goal is to sweep 15,000 curb miles each year. The most popular member of the team is the Royal Sweeper, and Will Goulden gets to drive it. Oh, the public reaction is always great. You know, everybody smiles and waves. Uh, sometimes it slows me down, but you know, no problems. Uh, you know, people like to take pictures in front of them. Nine of these trucks are powered by compressed natural gas, which is better for the environment. The other two run on diesel. These trucks remove the trash and debris that might otherwise wash into storm drains and clog the system, which can lead to street flooding and ultimately affect water quality in Kansas City's creeks, streams, and rivers. We get anything from leaves, trees, twigs, rocks, sand, um, you, uh, trash and you name it. From April 1st to June 30th, the crews will sweep the central zone of Kansas City. That's from the Missouri River south to 89th Street. 
After that, it's the north zone and then south. Aside from the other drivers who get in a hurry and cut in front of the trucks, longtime sweeper Buford Logan explains another problem. Homeowners who see the trucks as a leaf pickup service. What they do is they'll see the sweeper coming, and by the time you get there, they didn't rake their yard, their backyard, they got the electric blowers, and they blowing that stuff out in the street. When debris is piled up, the driver has to sweep the area more than once, which keeps him from getting to the next street on schedule. Also, there's a city ordinance that bans homeowners from blowing leaves into the street. These trucks can hold four cubic yards. That's about two pickup beds full of debris. When full, the driver calls for a dump truck. The hopper rises up 10 feet in the air, and it slides over to the truck, and it dumps it over inside the truck. Go back down, and they go right back to sweeping again. They do this all day, for, you know, 10 hours a day. When they're done, the street does look better. The Casey Water Utility Superintendent George Flores says the larger goal is water quality. The important is that it impacts our uh, stormwater collection system. If we're able to remove all the debris and trash before it goes inside our storm lines, um, it'll be easier for the treatment plants um, to treat the water going before it goes back into the river. The Street Sweeper program is funded through the monthly stormwater fee, which is typically $2.50 per customer. You can log on to kcwaterservices.org to see the street sweeper schedule and find contact information. The KC Streetcar is here and you're ready to ride. Here's the rider information you need to know. The KC Streetcar connects the River Market to Union Station by traveling up and down Main Street and around the City Market. There are 16 stops along the route, most with helpful digital kiosks. The KC Streetcar runs seven days a week, from early in the morning to late at night, and typically arrives every 10 to 15 minutes. Check the digital signs at each stop to see how long the wait will be. Wait at the stop for the next streetcar to arrive, but you won't need cash. It's free to ride. Once stopped, allow people to exit before boarding. Don't block the doorways for others. Board directly with bikes, strollers, and wheelchairs. Priority seating is available in the middle car. Bring backpacks, bags, and other personal items. Only service animals and small pets and carriers are welcome aboard. Be courteous to fellow passengers and the operator. Drinks with the lid are allowed on board, but don't bring nachos or other food. When the streetcar approaches your stop, signal the operator using the red button. Once the streetcar has stopped, press the button on the door to open, exit safely, and enjoy your day. Be smart, be safe, and enjoy the ride. Ride KC. Learn more at kcstreetcar.org. Our city is one of the few cities in the metro that offers free bulky item collection. Did I mention free? I'm Katrina Parker, and I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to get your bulky items picked up. It all starts right here at City Hall. The City's Solid Waste Division will pick up your bulky items for free when you make an appointment. Bulky items are any large items too big to be put in the regular trash set out. Here's how you can make an appointment. Go to kcmo.gov and search for bulky items. Fill out the online form and you're all set. Don't have computer access? No sweat. Just call 311 to schedule an appointment. Here are some quick rules to remember. Collections will not be made without an appointment and items must meet guidelines for large item collection. So the bulk item program is designed to be used for if you have some basic household, you know, I got furniture that I'm getting rid of or, you know, I, I bought a new refrigerator or something like that. Um, you know, it's not really designed if someone is doing a whole house remodel where they're uh, gutting their house out and, and, and that's not what the intent of the program is for. Here are some of the items we will pick up. Refrigerators, freezers, AC units, metal appliances, furniture, and a number of other items, including storm windows and glass panes. To help prevent injury to our workers, place a large X of masking tape 
across glass panes to prevent shattering and stack them separately from other bulky items. The entire list of what is and isn't acceptable is available online. Please remember that for the safety of our workers, crews will not collect bulky items beneath tree branches or low-hanging wires or items that are obstructed by vehicles. Place the items within 10 feet of the curb by 7 a.m. on the collection day. Do not place items curbside prior to 3 p.m. the day before the scheduled appointment. Doing so can get you a ticket. If someone takes trash and places trash in front of their own house, or trash or bulky in front of their own house uh, before their trash day, that's an improper set out, which is also a violation of our ordinance. If you need your items removed sooner, the city offers bulky item express pickup through a contractor for a fee. So if you're having a home, a minor home repair program project, you can actually order a dumpster and have it delivered to your house um, in lieu of trying to make a bulky appointment. The city, through our contractor, also offers dumpster rentals for those residents who need more flexibility in scheduling. You can schedule a bulky item express or a dumpster rental appointment online. If you have any other questions, head over to our website, kcmo.gov, and search for bulky items. I'm your host, Katrina Parker. As the largest animal rehab and rescue facility in the state of Missouri, Lakeside Nature Center works hard to return injured birds to nature as quickly as possible. But rehabbing various birds of prey and waterfowl requires providing a suitable hunting ground for them. Hi, I'm Kimberly Hess, the director at Lakeside Nature Center with uh, Kansas City Parks and Rec. And we went to KCPNL and applied for a grant. We got $3,000 to put in new uh, flight pen pools. And what this is, flight pens are where the birds go to um, start to fly better. They develop muscle there, whether they're uh, swans or raptors like eagles. We can house both of them there. Uh, the swans and the geese, they need pools to swim in. We didn't have those. We were actually using kiddie pools. Lakeside also offers educational programs and coordinates community conservation projects. It has two and a half miles of walking trails and about 70 animals. The center is open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, just go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and all of our great programs for viewing on demand. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great summer.